All right, let me load up some drops here for the next show that we are going to review. I'm going to need something uh, close to this. Absolute fucking bullshit. That's a good one. <laughs> That's yes. Let's see. What else will I need? Um, oh, LOL. We're laughing out loud. Very, very appropriate. Very appropriate. Oh, here's a good one. Oh, God. Yep. That's us being kicked in the nuts by the show. Yeah, that is us being kicked in the nuts by the show. Let's see, what else would be appropriate for this fucking horrible show right here? Here's one that's not appropriate. You've made me excruciatingly happy. Yeah. No, that's the opposite. Yep, that's the opposite. Uh, let's do one more. Out of my life, you washed up piece of crap. Yeah. That's what Lance Storm has said about TNA. Yeah, I was gonna say sadly that doesn't imply we have to watch it next week. Lance Storm has given up on this show. He's free. He's free. And he wrote quite the little rant on the Delia Bob right there on his website, stormwrestling.com. You can head over there or go to the front page of our website and read the rant. We're going to have to get him on the show sometime soon. He can take no more. He's done. Yes. I am proud that the name of the column is russo Rific. I take full credit <laughs> for that one. But, yes. So, Impact. It opened up with... Clips from last week, which had not aired. See, the show begins before the allotted one hour, and then it goes longer than the allotted one hour. So all that shit has to be crammed into the next show. So this was Abyss running out to go to the ambulance that they put Sting in after the fireball incident. And they opened up the Delia Bob, and Sting was not there. Mm -hmm. Vanished. Only his bat was there. They found his, quote, trademark bat. What the hell did they leave his bat for? He must be hurt. <laughs> all, all I know is that Abyss was in full Cookie Monster mode tonight. We had a segment with a number of people. Not as many as later on when I actually counted, but Borash was backstage. Bob Backlund was there. Kip James and BG James were outside Cornette's office waiting to get in. Chris Saban was there. He came up on a walker, was acting very old, to mock Jerry Lynn, who was the same age as Kip James, who was standing there in the background. <laughs> Chris Saban, X Division champion. You all right? What's this about? <clears throat> Chocolate? Excuse me, son. Can you speak into my good ear a little better? Chocolate? Oh, do you have Jerry Lynn? Against all odds? Jerry Lynn? What, what's with you crazy kids nowadays with your Pac Man video games and your stickers and balloons and. And what not, you crazy kids nowadays and six-sided rings. Back in my day, we had two-sided rings made out of sheepskin and cow testicles. Jerry Lane, he doesn't live in the past. He lives in the future. And coming up in the future, at Against All Odds, he's got an exhibition title shot. <laughs> Gas, son? Excuse me. That must have been me. Pardon me. Yeah. Not my fault. Don't blame me. Well, perhaps you could talk a little more about this segment. Well, the key to this is that Chris Saban came up in the walker, and he had the glasses and the wacky wig in the bathrobe, and he's supposed to look old. And it's a very important fact when you, or, or, or a very important factor when you're trying to do parody. You should be funny. You should try to to be humorous. Help some people on the border listening. Yes, or doing a show or whatever. But regardless, it was not funny. It was lame, and it just kept going and going and going. Going. Yeah, he's old. Ha ha. By the way, the X Division, I don't want to mention any names, but I should say all of them. They hate this show. Oh, come on now. Yeah, they, they hate this show. Alex Shelley, Jay Lethal, Sanjay Dutt, Austin Starr, and Jerry Lynn had a five way, no limits X Division matchup. Out came Chris Saban on the walker, and he said, and I quote, Look at me. I'm Jerry Lynn. <laughs> See? <laughs> I'm Jerry Lynn. Yes. Me, right now. Yeah, th this is an example of what is not funny. Well, no, this was an example of some dude just fucking hating this company. They had a shitty match, and uh, actually, I can't even say that. I just still say that about everything related to TNA. I don't remember the match. They, that's, that's more honest. They did 900 moves in 30 seconds. They did a whole bunch of moves, yep. And then, I believe, 
I believe, Lynn won. I'm not sure. No, he didn't win. Yeah, he did. No, he didn't. He made the hot tag, and the place Saban went crazy. Okay, yeah. Would you shut up? And right. then uh, Saban jumped up on the apron and distracted him, and then Shelly pinned Lynn. Okay, that's right. Lynn did not win. But uh, Saban distracted him by removing his bathrobe to reveal Depends. Yeah. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha. Where's my laughing thing here from uh, Kevin Nash? Boys, is that ever uh, appropriate here on this show? Oh, LOL. We're laughing out loud. We were all laughing out loud at the Depends on this show. So then Shelly and Star and Saban beat up uh, Lynn for a while and put the diapers on him, and, and, and then I think then she ran out and a bunch of stuff. I'm starting to remember this match now. Jerry Lynn made a hot tag, and the place just went nuts. And I was like, holy crap, this is working. This is something that's actually working on this show. And then they did the Walker, the Depends, the bullshit, and it just got such heat. And it wasn't even good heat. It was that fuck this show kind of heat. And for those of you that don't believe me, the live reports from the show were that about 25% of the people left after the first taping. And by the end of the second taping, 50% of the people were gone. Yeah. They lost half the building that it got in for free. For free. Oh, yeah. No good. Hell of a booking job here there, uh, Russo. So, then we had LAX with a giant... Here's what oh, happened. Jesus. I'm just going to try and explain this, because I don't even know what happened. LAX went to a restaurant and started breaking things. There was a dude in the back. He grabbed a butcher knife, so Hernandez choked him, and then Homicide threatened to cut off his fingers. Everybody was yelling and screaming. And then they cut back to Mike Tanay and Don West, who said, and I quote... The situation between LAX and Team 3D has really gotten personal. But when you go to a family in their own backyard, you've just gone way too far. Whose family? Don't know. Whose backyard? Don't know. Nobody knows. There was just some old white guy they beat up. There were no Dudleys in sight. No. And then, and then after today was ranting, Don West was like, and let me tell you about that February 12th show, everybody. Just totally yes, so blowing so, off. Don West interrupted today, who was talking about the angle to plug the show. And then Joe came out. Interrupting Don West. Yes, they interrupted their own plug. That's, that's TNA in a nutshell, right? Well, no, there's more, uh, there's more TNA in a nutshell to come. But, yes, they did, in fact, interrupt their plug for the Monday night show. Now, apparently, what LAX had done is broken into a restaurant owned by the Dudleys' parents or something. Or Bubba's uncle or some, some shit. wackiness, and they threatened to cut off his fingers. Nobody got arrested. Nobody got sent to jail. They just did an angle. No, and, and, and he didn't even explain it to us. And this is not the typical pro wrestling angle. We've all seen pro wrestling angles. We all suspend our disbelief when someone gets beaten up. A knife was pulled, a man was choked with wire, and his head was placed into an oven. Yeah. No one called the cops. No police involvement. No, absolutely not. It's just, you know, it's not. This, things happen. There's fighting. Bullshit. Then Joe said he was going to be a special enforcer. Christian appeared on the big screen, said Joe knew the truth. Truth about what? Didn't he announce last week that Joe wasn't his consultant? I, I can't remember. Well, I keep track he did. So what does Joe not know the truth about? <laughs> well, What's he talking about? Apparently Christian was lying when he said Joe was not the consultant. That's what we were supposed to think. Oh, a, oh double swerve. Okay. Fuck. <laughs> I didn't realize this was so intricate. So... Oh, Jesus. <laughs> so tonight he said Angle was going to get a third hint about the consultant. So it wasn't Joe. He wasn't lying because he said there'd be another hint tonight. Well, he said there'd be another hint or has there already been a hint? Oh, Jesus. I, this show just... <laughs> oh. And then they played Christian's music as Joe left. Why? I don't know. Borash wanted to know who the fans thought the consultant was going to be. We can spend 99 cents to vote on the TNA mobile service. If Options you, were Goldberg, Brock, Joe, or none. If you spent any of your own money to vote on this, please kill yourself. <laughs> really, uh, don't, you're clogging up life and taking up valuable oxygen. Up, oh, Jesus. Angry man. Up walk Miss Tennessee and James Storm threatened to beat Gail and Chris Harris at the pay-per-view. Then Eric Young walked up. They all talked about rubbers. Time was wasted on this. Christy Hemme and BG and Kip stormed into Cornette's office. Let's see. In this segment, we had Backlund, Borash, Storm, Miss Tennessee, Christy, Eric, Kip, and BG. It started and off... it all meant nothing. <laughs> it started off just with a hint of okayness. It was Storm, 
and Jackie, Jacqueline Moore, calling out P.D. Williams and Gail Kim for the pay-per-view. I thought, okay, this is leading to a match at a pay-per-view. Great. Then it all went downhill. It all went downhill. For the crashing thud. All those people mentioned, and I don't even know what the point of it was, just giving people time on TV. You know, 40 people were on this show this evening. That's what I heard. 40 people on a 60-minute show. Now, that's not counting the people at the restaurant. If you count the people at the restaurant, we're probably up above 50. Yeah, and, and 60 minutes... You know, that includes commercials. And of those 40 people on this show, who got over? How many? Oh, fuck, none. None. <laughs> exactly none. Wow. Boy, this show is just on fire. Got a point nine nine, by the way, everybody. Awesome. Wow. Abyss and Mitchell was screaming outside. The generic blonde walked up to interview him. Didn't even get a question. She just had to appear on the screen. They needed another body on TNA this week. Mitchell sent Abyss to get Sting, which I don't even think he ever did. They recap the Eric Young, Tracy, Robert Root angle. Then Robert Root faced Petey Williams. Gail is now managing Petey. So apparently it's, I guess, Petey and Gail at the pay-per-view and not Chris Harris, who may never be coming back, they claim. Mm-hmm. Petey made a comeback. Gail and Tracy got in a brawl. Ref was distracted. Storm super kicked Petey. Root got the pin. Tennessee attacked Gail. Eric Young ran down to clear the ring. Tennessee... Or he drop kicked Tennessee, then he threatened to punch Tracy, but Rude pulled her out, and then Eric left with Tracy, and Rude had a look on his face like this was great. Oh my god, I'd forgotten all of that. That's why I take notes. <laughs> Jesus. Got that, everybody? That really happened? Yeah, you got that? I hope everyone wrote all that down so that uh, you're hyped for the pay per view coming up. I remember Eric leaving with the girl, and that's Quiet. all. And we got to immediately cut backstage. Don't even think about it, there's no time. Cut to backstage, something was going on. Christy was freaking out in Cornette's office, acting like the biggest bitch in the history of unstable bitches. <laughs> Screaming and yelling and acting just absurdly out of control. And then up came Kip James, who was also going crazy. Cornette said if she wanted to wrestle, she could wrestle the pay-per-view. She wanted to know who her opponent was. He said it would be a tournament. Then he ran off. A tournament. Actually, he said to be determined. Oh, to be off. determined. God, this, I don't know which is worse. <laughs> I, I, There's nothing like an angle, and Russo's the king of this. There's nothing like writing an angle where your whole idea is there are no baby faces and no heels. It's all shades of gray. So you end up creating all these absurd characters that it's impossible to like. Yeah. How can you like Gail? How could you like Christy Hemme in this angle? How could you like Kip James? The They're most. both absolutely, absurdly They're hateable people. They're horrible people, yes. Ron Kim. <laughs> This made me laugh. <laughs> Ron Killings is in front of a flag. He's in an army outfit. It says, a few good black men. He starts cutting Jack Nicholson's promo from the Few Good Men film, which is a great promo, by the way. And he got about three sentences in, and they just cut away, <laughs> never to return. <laughs> and in the middle of this, what comes into frame? The boom mic. They <laughs> couldn't even tape it again. And it was a, not like it was a, a a wide shot with a lot of space. This was zoomed in very tightly on, on Mr. Killings. I don't think the top of his head was showing, but there it, it probably struck him. The big, giant boom mic comes out of the sky and hits him in the face. I have never seen a worse pro wrestling television show. <laughs> oh, my God. Impact. Impact. Jim Mitchell came out ranting and raving about the Sting Abyss deal. Abyss is an animal, nothing without Mitchell, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> okay, there was like prison pillars set up with barbed wire Hold on Hold on a second, you're right. getting ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. So he's ranting and a box comes from the ceiling. <laughs> a box lowers down. Yeah. And he takes the cover off this box, and it's about six feet high, three feet wide by three feet square or whatever, three by three by six, it, basically. It's a cell. And he's ranting about how there, he has two opportunities with Sting after what happened last week. He can show the tape of him assaulting him and kidnapping him and handing it to the authorities, which should be good for 15 to 20 years. Or Sting can wrestle Abyss in a prison yard match at a pay-per-view. <laughs> right. And I like how they bring up the fact that he could be arrested for this and no mention of the Dudley's assault. Oh, no, no, no. That's, that's different. Oh, it's different, yeah. Yeah, sure. So, and then it's just like, 
Oh no, they they went they went to the Raptors and there's staying in an abyss mask. And today's like he's wearing an abyss mask, but is it Abyss's mask? What's going on? <laughs> and then they cut away. And that again is yet another divine defining TNA moment. The announcer's screaming, What's going on? What's going on? Here is Jim Mitchell looking up staying in an abyss mask. They, they they brought out just for this promo, they set up like mini prison walls as it started to say with barbed wire on top of them. They lowered this cell. I, I actually, because Mitchell is back to it, I expected this thing from, to pop out of the box. But no, it was part of his promo. He wanted it there. So does that mean in the prison yard match, these two men are going to climb into this tiny structure and, and battle? I was trying to figure out what the point of this box was. What is the box there for? It was just there. Maybe it's the first one into the box to win. There, was, no, just, there was just a tiny little cell there that, that the only way you could put these two men in is seriously if they were fucking. Pretty much. And I sure hope that's not the match. I will not pay for that. I have no idea what these two men could possibly do in this box together. And if they're not going to be in the box, why the box was there? I don't know. They just had to have a box. I, 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 you know what it was? They just wanted a structure with five poles on it. That, just put it in the middle of the show. Look at all the poles on this thing, they said. God. I, I did want to see on one of the Wrestling Gold DVDs, they did a shark cage match. Which is basically the same thing. They had two men... Getting a, like a four by four cage and fight, and and Cornette was on commentary talking about how stupid it was and how it should never be done again. Well, Vinny Rue has brought it from the depths. He's brought it from the depths. Then we had Lance Hoyt cutting a promo, hyping up brace base brawl at the pay per view. He got twenty seconds, which was twenty seconds too long, but still it was the most productive twenty seconds on the show. <laughs> they plugged the match for the pay per view. Yep, thumbs up. Devon cut a promo. And said his partner usually did all the talking, but his partner wasn't there. He was dealing with the family. Said they'd never think of disrespecting a man's family. No, not the Dudleys. Said when Bubba returned, there would be hell to pay. This wasn't about the titles. It was about respect. What about crime? <laughs> it's about respect. And there's nothing better than saying this is not about the titles anymore. We don't care about the titles. That's awesome. By the way, um, actually, I was ranting about the cage again. AJ and Joe... I just saw this in ROH, and it was awesome. And then I saw it here, and it blew. <laughs> the end. AJ's actually been in rare form lately. He's doing a gimmick where, at the beginning of the match, a guy tries to do something, and he avoids it, and celebrates like he's won the triple jump again. Yes. The county triple jump contest. And then he gets punched in the face, which was great. This was actually fun for, like, the 18 seconds that it lasted. And then... Rhino came out and threw AJ into the ring, and, and it was a, I guess it was a DQ. The, the bell just rang. I, I don't know. They never said it, who won, who lost, why, nothing like that. Joe cut a promo afterwards saying he was here to clarify his position. I thought he was there to wrestle. I was wrong. Seriously, <laughs> now it's, it's TNA. you got to talk. So he said he wasn't leaving unless Christian came out. So they went to commercial. And, of course, the main event, as always, is talking. Right as is the case on TNA in every show since November or October, whenever Russo came in. Angle came out and said if Joe was going to screw him, why wait? Why not do it now? Called Angle a liar so they could get into their weekly fight. You know, every time they, you know, they're not going to fight till belts on the line, but they still fight every week. So they beat each other up, and, and then Christian clonked Angle with a chair and asked for a handshake from Joe. Joe flipped him off and clotheslined him, and now AJ was back in, helping Christian beat on Joe. I asked the question again, how can anyone like this show? <laughs> I don't know. This was, I believe, the second worst TNA show I've ever seen. I actually could find things to laugh about. They were so bad in this show. The one about a month and a half ago that I really ranted about, that was the worst show i ever seen all time, all my life. The, the two-hour show in one hour? Yeah, so that was three hours show in one hour. There's actually something on this, I actually remember this. There's something on this impact show that you skimmed over or, or, or forgot entirely. There was a Chris Daniels promo. And the point of this promo was he's won the X Division belt a bunch of times. He's lost it a bunch of times. It's meaningless <laughs> right. now. That's right. He could win it again, but he'll just lose it again. So who cares? Yeah. That, that was the whole point of the promo. The, yeah. X, the point of this promo was the X Division title is, in fact, meaningless. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to TNA, everybody. Oh, my God. Oh, it's so funny. It's so funny. Ah. <laughs> I can't top that one. 
Do we have a Vince McMahon laugh? I can't remember if we do or not. I only know we have this one. That, that's off after watching CNA. It is. Vince McMahon, what did you think of TNA this past Thursday night? <laughs> Tell me more. I need. I just give you a little more uh, information on this TNA. That will never not. That be was funny. a fucking brilliant promo, from from screaming to sobbing and saying, "Oh yeah, <laughs> this complete devastation." Oh my gosh! So that sucked. That was a horrible show. TNA sucks. TNA performed fellatio. <laughs> I don't like to overuse my cliches such as suck the cock. God, this show every week is so bad. <laughs> you know what's sad? How good it should be? Well, that too. But How good it could be so easily? This week's show did 1.6 million viewers. A new record for TNA. Wow. In the nearly five years that TNA has been around, this is the most people that have ever watched a show. 1.6 million viewers. And they watched this show. I believe that if, if ECW did its usual number, they're only separated by 400,000 viewers. Very close. Now, with that said, they've got a pay-per-view on Sunday that's going to do 25 to 30,000 <laughs> buys. All these new viewers... Don't give a shit enough to actually buy a show. <laughs> that is so sad and so pathetic. Why, you ask? Let's take a look. <laughs> we'll get into that right now. They recapped last week, Sting wearing an Abyss mask, but is it Abyss's mask? What's happening? Who fucking cares? No, wait, what did Sinead say? We don't know. Who knows? I don't understand. What's going on? If What's going worse? on? He said Abyss, real name Chris Park. That's always good. Well, sent to he's prison. not a monster, he's Chris. He's Chris. Chris Park. Chris Park. Sent to prison for shooting his dad three times in the back. I'd like to note that last week Jim Mitchell threw fire at Sting's face and he was hospitalized. He was not sent to prison. I don't know how law works in TNA. <laughs> not by the laws of law. E even when it's brought up. Yeah. When Mitchell threatens to have Sting thrown in jail, but instead they'll have a match. Yeah. Meanwhile, LAX goes to New York and, and, and threatens Bubba's family and, and tries to stuff an old man's head in an oven. <laughs> and tries to cut his fingers off with a knife. These things just happen. Yeah. So it, it's just about, it needs to be settled in the ring. You know, the, the I just have to mention this because it's funny. The EXC debuted tomorrow on Showtime. What the fuck's that guy's name? Um... Frank Shamrock. No, he's filing a lawsuit against uh, EXC. Um, God damn it, hold on. This kind of thing, this is why you're, while, uh, while he does mail. He's filing a lawsuit against EXC because he's claiming that he helped come up with the idea, they said he'd be a part owner, he was going to get all this money and everything like that, and instead he ain't got jack shit. So he's filing a lawsuit, and he flat out said, this issue will be settled in court, not in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> we need more of that in wrestling. Yes. So Abyss came out. Abyss came out, and he faced Chase Stevens, who is the blonde-haired natural. The match went ten seconds. One minute of the show, same old shit. The other natural came in, who I thought had been fired. He apparently has not been. And he was also... Beaten up, and then Shane Douglas was in the ring, and security was holding him back, and he was just there. Mm -hmm. And he was there as, as uh, I don't know what happened. Here's Abyss was out there, and then Sting was in the rafters, and he seemed to kill Abyss. And then Douglas and the Naturals, who had just appeared, then just disappeared. Right. I guess we were just supposed to see them. They had to be on the show somewhere. 
And we had Sting, Mitchell, Abyss, Douglas, two naturals, a referee, and four guys to break it up, plus a match and angle interview, all before the opening credits. That's correct. My favorite part of all this is, despite the fact that it was a match, an angle, and a promo, all before the credits, Don West specifically says, he says Shane Douglas is there to, to, to get the naturals to stop wearing the gear. He wants his franchise name back, damn it. He wants them to stop wearing it. Then he says, we've all seen this happen over and over again on Explosion. No, we haven't. I've never watched Explosion. You've never shown me clips of Explosion. You never told me what Explosion is or when it's on. Continue. Taper off. Is there any way I can sign this check back over to myself? How can I do that? Can I just endorse it myself and go cash it? I'm trying my best, goddammit. That is a good point, though. Impact, or, or whatever the name of that show was, Explosion. Who the fuck knows what Explosion is? I don't know. They, they never talk about it. They never say when it's on. They never show clips on it. They, uh, once every other month or so, they'll mention, we saw this on. 34% of the fans know that Russo is booking because they understand a swerve when they see it. They put up the fan voting of who is going to be the special enforcer, and the majority said none. They figured it's just going to be a swerve. It's, gonna be some it's guy. not going to be anybody that you guys mentioned. It'll be somebody else. Blonde interviewed Kurt and Joe about their main event match tonight. She got three words in. Joe cut her off. She looked so haggard. I don't know if it was 3 o'clock in the morning and she'd fucked this up 85 times or what, but, God, she looked horrible. And then Joe and Angle admitted they hate each other. Angle said everything went well tonight. He'd give Joe the first shot after he beat Christian. And then uh, challenged Christian to bring the consultant out later. Which, of course, he did. Don't wait for the pay-per-view or anything like that. Uh, they showed... Oh, then Bubba cut a promo. He said, You guys may know my dad's last name is Dudley. My mom's last name is Lamonico. Real name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He said... He was a half-angry redneck, half-pissed-off Italian. Don West goes, sounds like a lethal combination to me. Bubba said they crossed the line, and he was going to beat them up at the pay-per-view. You pissed off my family. Apparently, you, you attempt to cut a man's fingers off and stuff his head in an oven, and he gets pissed. Who knew? Who knew? Crazy. Then out came Conan, who cut a great promo. <laughs> As he tends to do. Oh, my God. This was the first money promo of the year from TNA. I don't know if it drew much money. <laughs> may have sold, uh, you know, 500 buys maybe or something of that nature. But by God, this was this is a promo that was over. I was like, actually, I shouldn't say that. I'll tell you what really happened. In the middle of this promo, I was like, this is so good. I actually want to see this match. And then all of a sudden, it broke down into a brawl. <laughs> and guys were in there hitting each other and doing moves. And I was like, well... So much of that. Uh, and, and, and since it's TNA, it can't just break into a, into a brawl. No. Conan and Bubba are going back and forth. Spike wanders out. They tell him to leave. He leaves. He leaves. <laughs> <laughs> that was his appearance on the show. Then LAX comes out. Then they have the brawl. And they do a million things. They try to position Bubba's arm like between the steps and the ring and then whack the steps with the, with the chair. But Which I, I already forgotten. I only remember very effective angle. I only remember it because the chairs in the ring were, or, 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 excuse me, the stairs in the ring were very, very far apart, and there was it looked very phony. I, I laughed, but yes. I also, this is this is way down the list of annoying things in TNA, but when guys are cutting a promo and they they stop to take a breath, Don and Mike Tanay shouldn't say anything. Yes, <laughs> it just gets annoying. There was actually something on the show here. It was actually Don. It was Don West. At the end of the show, Sting's coming out, and he's cutting a promo, and Don's just talking over him. <laughs> like, talking over Sting. I know Sting's talking in the ring, but I have a line here in my format for me. I'm going to read it. Yes, just talk right over Sting. Christy Hemme did a promo, and say what you will about Christy's acting lately, but uh, she was Hillary Swank... <laughs> Trying to think of award-winning actors. Meryl um, Streep. Meryl Streep. Um, Glenn Close. Kate Winslet. All of them put together next to this blonde. <laughs> it was so bad. Who is many levels above Rebecca on ECW. Yeah. So. <laughs> the complete lack of talent in this industry these days. Kip and BG showed up. 
Kibbo on the lap dance. Bee Gees like, my children watch this show. So they're the ones. And then he <laughs> explains, yeah. And uh, then he walked off. And, and, of course, since Russo's writing this, will not be a breakup. And Chrissy's probably going to end up in the China role with uh, 3LK. Something stupid like that. <laughs> but there you go. She's going to have a match on, on uh, Sunday. Sunday. It's a mystery opponent. And uh, since it's Russo, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to get, but I suspect it's not going to be like uh, Gail Kim. <laughs> Just want to throw that one Although, out. that would not stun me. If it's Gail Kim? Sure. It ain't going to fucking be Gail Kim. It's... Haven't you figured anything out about this show yet? Think about anything that makes sense, and that's not what you're going to get. How does Gail Kim make sense? She's a girl. <laughs> she can wrestle. Obviously, that's not going to be the answer. My bad. Fuck. I was, I was thinking level above, thinking who would be interacting with these people. Of course. But no, he, even that was too great a too great a stretch. <laughs> My bad. Borash interviewed AJ, who is now a wacky, dumb redneck. You know, it's funny. We just had Lance Storm on the show on Wednesday, and he's like, "How come Vince Russo has to make every character stupid?" <laughs> he goes, "When I was in WCW, he wanted me to be um um the uh." World, let's see, what was it? The NWO, the W, he, something, World Canadian Order or something, but he wanted it to be WOC, like you're so dumb, you don't even know what the NWO is or something like that. And and, and Lance is like, why do I, why do you always want me to be dumb? Well, here we go. AJ's just a dumb redneck. He's trying to explain some shit about scientists don't know how bumblebees fly and shit like that, which actually. This may not have been written for him because Russo isn't very current, but I just read an article like two months ago. They figured out why bumblebees can fly. So, Well, this also goes back to the, the, the Jerry Lawler comment about Super Crazy on Raw, so bumblebees are the, the new big thing in wrestling in 2007. <laughs> well, yeah, that's what we need. I guess the the, 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 uh, the Brunzel, the killer bees. The <laughs> bees, Jim Brunzel and B. Brian Blair. Well, fuck, uh, you know, uh, uh, Backlund's back. <laughs> Bring back the killer bees. Why yeah. not? I'm already losing my train. I'm losing my mind here. <laughs> Lynn Senshi and Rhino versus James Storm, Saban, and Austin Star. Star pins Senshi with a brain buster. I laugh so hard. <laughs> Senshi hates doing jobs. And so they give him this brain buster, and he just fucking lies flat on his back like this and just doesn't move. <laughs> and they cover him for three, and then he like he, he just he just lays there. It was the funniest thing I've ever seen. It's like he was saying I'm down for three seconds on my back. I am pinned. Didn't kick his feet. Nope, didn't, nope, nope. didn't act like he couldn't get out. Just laid there like a geek. Oh, my God. The one minute or whatever. Three minute filler match, yeah. More Nash wackiness, which I think was as long as the match we just saw, and it led to nothing. Something about Sanjay and, and Jay Lethal were there. Yeah. There, well, were, there were dolls involved. Eric Young and Tracy were... Mm, humping backstage, and Borash walked up, and she walked off and said she loved him, and, and Eric said, you heard her, she loves me. I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> I really don't care is the important part. <laughs> Sting came out in a wacky abyss mask. I should note another thing here. For those of you that we always joke that Russo was stuck in 1997, Abyss has a new mask. I was just going to bring this up, but go ahead. It is a red leather mask. He looks exactly like Kane. <laughs> well, there's that, too. He didn't look enough like Kane with a red mask or a black mask. No. They had to give him the red one. He is Kane from 97. He's yeah. the big red machine in TNA. <laughs> the other great thing is he still has shaggy hair that hangs over. It was not immediately clear he had this mask, but he came out and he wrestled and he left. Somewhere in the middle here, Don West just shouts, I just noticed. Abyss has a new mask. <laughs> if you're going to go through the trouble. Even though at the beginning of the show, Sting had cut a promo in a black mask, and they had had a shot of Abyss in the opener wearing a red mask. Yeah. yeah. Make everything clear. Oh, Jesus. This is just so bad. So, let's see what happened. What the hell are we? Okay, let's see. Sting had a mask on, and the cage came down, and Mitchell was in it. And I thought, okay, since the winner of this match has to put his opponent in the cage, that means Mitchell's going to easily get out of this cage tonight. It's the only thing that makes no <laughs> sense, so obviously that'll happen. Didn't quite go that way, but Mitchell did manage from inside the cage to choke out Sting with a belt. Yes. <laughs> they beat him up, and <laughs> that was that. Yep. What a great match that's going to be. And, and again, for these promos, the, the, the prison decorations come out. 
Mm-hmm. The, 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 the styrofoam walls and everything. And then but when, at the end of the segment, they're just gone. Yeah, just gone. Another Daniels promo about how he's a jobber and he's sad. <laughs> Borash interviewed Dale Torborg and A.J. Pierzynski. They cut a public access level promo <laughs> about base brawl. And then Hoyt walked up with another unidentified ball player. Or he was identified, briefly. Did and you? and he, he clonked Torborg with a chair. And basically, David Eckstein couldn't even show up to plug his own match at the pay-per-view. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, 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 the highlight here is, I do follow baseball to, to, to some degree, but I didn't recognize this guy. Yeah. You know, some guy went to him with a chair and they said, oh, hey, it's Johnny Damon. I thought, oh, all right. That was that. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Had to get that angle in for the match that's going to sell no buys. Angle and Joe versus Christian and AJ. You know, I love Dave, but I got him here. Uh-oh. <laughs> what did Dave say? Well, nothing. We, were, we just both did the Thursday news update, and my news update said, well, it's the main event of Impact. It's going to be two minutes. And his said this went something like eight or 12 minutes on in the building, so they may get a little time here. Oh, no. You fool. Two minutes. They got two minutes here for this wacky match. Angle pinned AJ with the... Wait, Rhino came out to attack AJ. Yeah, you can't just have a match. Someone Angle, has to run out. Angle hit a top rope Olympic slam. Scott Steiner then hit the ring, beat the crap out of everybody. And, yes, they revealed the mystery man before the pay-per-view. <laughs> It's Scott Steiner. He's not even wrestling on the pay-per-view. No, he's just there to consult. Yep, yeah, they, they, which they could have made us pay. They could have made us pay to see him consult. No, he just revealed it. They revealed it on the go-home show. And show ended with typical TNA fashion when we had three heels beating up three baby faces, and Don West identified it as a numbers game. <laughs> <laughs> don't know what that means. But that's I don't know. fine. I will say this. <clears throat> Usually when TNA ends, I think, I hope that company goes out of business this week and I never have to watch it again. When this show ended, I thought to myself, there's a match there that I'd like to see. The bad news is the match was AJ Styles versus Kurt Angle. Which we ain't seen. Which is not seen this Sunday or any time in the near future. I actually thought that same thing. I was like, that is going to be a great These match. These guys work awesome together. We, we can tell how many 30 seconds they were together. Yep, but we're not We're gonna never going to see it. No. Nope. Fuck. 25,000 buys, everybody, for the pay-per-view on Sunday, and that's a sad, sad thing. Brian and Vinny here for the post-TNA pay-per-view recap. It is February 12th, 2007, here at 4wonline.com. I'm going to be talking about this exciting, wacky program here. And I didn't hate it nearly as much as apparently a lot of people did. I've, I've seen worse. A lot of people really hated this show. <laughs> now, I think part of the problem is that my standards have been lowered significantly from watching the bullshit that we see every week that is called Impact. And maybe this was one of the worst shows of all time. Unfortunately, I've seen so much horrible stuff that I can't say this was the worst pay-per-view ever. Now, granted, it had some horrible things in, in it, including the worst segment in a thousand years, perhaps. And the matches, however, were not horrible. <laughs> there, <laughs> there were two or three good ones. There, there were some matches that, that were actually, I don't know if I go out of my way and say get the pay-per-view or, or get a copy or anything like that, but they weren't bad. And that's a positive. So There was enough stuff I didn't hate that I can say this is definitely, without question, not the worst pay-per-view of all time. Yeah. Now, for those people, and there are a lot of them, asking, Brian, what are you guys going to do tomorrow night? There's no Raw. What are you going to recap on the show? These people have been asking these questions. I think this question started like three days ago. It it amuses me. People think that we put effort into this show. Well, anything Well, it's kind of the same point, but... I don't think about this show until usually several minutes after we start, actually. That, uh, usually, <laughs> I, I figure you don't even think about it until days after it's finished. <laughs> and, and, and you and, realize what, how horrible oh, you were the other God day. damn, I did a show. And, and yet, the community I'm sure. is already thinking about this show and have been for the past 72 hours or so. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that people are looking forward to this, so, uh, this show so much. And they're, they're, they're asking about it on a Thursday or I whatever. I guess a good sign. It's a good sign. And in but the case, they're worried they may miss... Let me explain something. Some, let me explain something to everybody. We don't think about this stuff. <laughs> I am thinking about it right now for the first time, and the answer is I don't know what we're going to do. But I think I've got a plan, Uh-oh. and some of you are going to be very ha- very unhappy when you hear this plan, 
But I'm thinking the plan is there's not going to be a show tomorrow. We're not going to do a show Monday night. You've had worse ideas. Well, there's more to it than that, Vinny. You're not just getting a day off. I, I, I had I had a sus- suspicion there'd be more. There is more. Now I think what we're going to do is this. We do not we do not need to do five straight shows in a row. I'm putting my foot down on that. <laughs> I, I, we, we usually had done two shows per week, and we've been doing four. And I'm not adding another one for five, especially Monday and Tuesday are hellish days having to get the newsletter done. So, I think the plan is we are not going to do a show. Tomorrow night, that being Monday night, because Raw is not on. It is not on. It's preempted for the the dogs. And the so T- we're going to watch the dog show. No, we're not. The TNA show is a best of TNA show, so it's not like that needs to be watched. So really, all we talk about is Guerrero Del Ring, which everybody cries about, and Hogan knows best. So you know, I don't want to make people unhappy by by talking about Lucha. So we're just not going to do a show. But but it's not punishment. The reason we're not doing a show is because Tuesday, as some of you are aware, and most of you probably are not, WWE is coming to town. They are filming SmackDown, I believe, in Seattle. Is mm-hmm. that where it's at? It's in, uh, in Seattle, along with, of course, ECW. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I may we bail. may leave early. I may bail on this, actually. I, I, I will just say that right now. I may bail on it. But we're, we're apparently going to be seat fillers. I was under the impression Sean was going to get his tickets. Uh, it wasn't, wasn't that sort of what he indicated by saying, how many tickets do we need? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so, Sean, apparently these are interchangeable. Yeah, I, he asked how many tickets we needed, and I said, I'll take one, trying to be a nice guy, you know, I'm not yeah, greedy. Right, right. Just, I, I reply the same thing. I, I just need one. Just give me one ticket. And so then, you know, a couple days ago, it's like, you guys will be seat fillers, show up at 530. So I'm hoping that we actually get tickets. I hope that we they're, they're, this is not a sellout, and I don't show up there and get sent home. In which case, I'll kill Sean. That would be horrible. I don't think it works that way. Well, we shall see. But I could be wrong. Anyway, so we're, we'll likely be at the SmackDown show on Tuesday night. So I think of the instead of the usual Monday night show, we're going to do a Tuesday night show instead, where we will recap Hogan Knows Best, Guerrero Del Ring, because I'm going to recap that show till the end of time. I don't care what anybody says. And maybe FSC as well, the, the Fox Sports Espanol version of the show. And we'll talk about SmackDown and ECW and our trip to the show. And I know a number of local area talents will be there, including young Caden and Bolo, both of whom worked out at the training school last week with myself and Buddy preparing for the battle. And let's just say Bolo's ready to go. I can't necessarily say the same about Caden. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. We shall see. God bless young Caden. But so anyway, that's the plan, and that's what's going to happen. So everybody rename the thread, the Brian and Vinny Show thread, no show tomorrow night. It will be Tuesday instead. So anyway, let's get on to the TNA pay-per-view here, which was a... It was like a, a thumbs-down show, don't get me wrong. No, I'll give it a thumbs in the middle. It's kind of guy really? I am. All right, sure. Why do you give it a thumbs down? Well, it's not... A thumbs up would mean you would indicate someone they should order the replay. Okay. And I can't say that, so it must be a thumbs down. <laughs> That's the stupidest logic I've ever heard. Because it couldn't be a thumbs up, it has to be a thumbs down. That's what a thumbs in the middle is for. A thumbs in the middle is a wishy washy. And, and that wasn't what the show was. This is another one, Vinny, where you can call it a thumbs down now, but I guarantee you by the time we get through this recap here, you're going to go, you know what? This was a thumbs down. No, I'm not show. saying it was a horrible show. I'm saying I, I, I think thumbs in the middle should not be an option. Unless you, 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 did, you should be torn. It should be a last resort. It's a, it's a wishy washy thing. Take, take a stand for once. Thumbs up or thumbs down? My my stand is thumbs in the middle. <laughs> Fine. Why do you have to take a stand? I, c- cause Fine. If I'm going to take a stand, I'll say thumbs up if you really make me do that. Okay. Take, because when you look at this this whole damn show here, there were at least three matches that were uh, two and a half stars or better. Okay. So you're going to give a thumbs down to a show with three decent matches? Yes. God, you're an idiot. This is a thumbs in the middle show, everybody. Don't listen to Vince. Anybody that listens to Vince for, for any sort of... I don't know if you're if you're in the, on the fence about getting a pay per view or not. Don't listen to Vince. Just do that for me, please. He can have his opinion, but it's wrong. And as long as we all recognize that, we'll be okay. Fair enough. The TNA pay per view opened up with the chicks dancing in cages. I thought they'd be back for the whole show. Unfortunately, they were not, which actually is a thumbs down moment. The opener was, and let me just say this as we get into the opener. Now, granted, the wrestling was not the worst I'd ever seen. This show. As far as things making sense, <laughs> ranks low on the list of 
things that make sense. Most logical pay-per-views I've ever seen. It ranks high on the list of the most illogical shows I've ever seen. LAX and Team 3D had a wacky street fight. It was called a Little Italy Street Fight. They had set up tables and such in the ring, and it was just a brawl. And there were these strippers out there in cages, because I guess that, you know, Little Italy, I guess there's strip clubs nearby. I'm not entirely sure what this was about. Apparently, in the promo, Brother Ray cut on, on Impact, he said, I will beat you from the strip club to the cafe to, to something else. So, so they, they had a strip club and a cafe out there. Yeah. Ha, ha, ha. So, let me explain what happened here. During the middle of this brawl early on, Bubba got a lap dance from the strippers. Yes. Think about this, everybody. In the middle of the street fight. They had a street fight that was stemming from an incident where LAX went to Bubba Ray Dudley's uncle's restaurant and right. threatened to cut off his fingers and put his head in an oven, yes. which pissed off the family. And thus, this resulted in a street fight that Bubba Ray was so into that he got a lap dance in the middle of it. So determined was he to, to take vengeance on the attackers that he stopped for a lap dance. He stopped for a lap dance. I hate this company poor sometimes. Booking. Very poor booking. So, yeah, he's having a lamp dance, and then they did a match and this sort of thing, and it broke down in every hardcore match you've ever seen. And then four Mexicans hit the <laughs> ring. Four Mexicans hit the ring. Yes? <laughs> it's so silly. Four Mexicans hit the ring, and Mike Tanay, without skipping a beat, says, members of the Latino nation are in the ring. Like it's a, a an Indian tribe, the Latino <laughs> nation. Yes, they're just... Random Hispanics. Yeah, they they hit the ring, and, and both Tanay and Don West were addressing the situation and speaking of the Hispanic Latino nation as if they had been on every pay-per-view for the last four and a half years. Oh, every show. Well, there's a Latino nation outside. Oh, the Latino nation's doing this. And the whole time I just thought, who the fuck is the Latino nation? Who are these people? <laughs> We've never seen them before. They have never been identified. They just no, have... there's no hint of them, isn't there? Conan did not threaten that members of the Latino Nation would show up at the pay-per-view. You know, whenever you do a great a great angle with somebody showing up, I mean, there, there's the old cliched line, he doesn't even work here. Or or people going, who's that? Why would Mike Tanay know who these four men were? <laughs> They've never been on the show. They've never done an interview. No. We know nothing about them. They just appeared out of nowhere. And Mike Tanay is like, oh, the Latino Nation. Yes. Like, like I don't know, like they're a rap band or something. Mike Tanay knows the Latino from miles away. God, this was so stupid. The Latino Nation is, is back. And the best thing was these four Mexicans ran out and they just all got killed. Yeah, they were thrown outside and then they were just out there. Hell of a little group here. So long story short, they, they ate it in the wind and, and they cut to a shot near the end of, of Homicide and Hernandez on the ramp. And Conan was there. He just sort of appeared. He hadn't been there at all all night, and he just sort of appeared on the ramp. And then the Latino nation was surrounding them, and I thought, NWO black and white. They have just they have just taken the hottest act in the company and made it the NWO black and white with Virgil. Virgil and Ray Trailer and... And Stevie Ray. Stevie Ray. That's exactly what this was. This group needs goofs. They killed LAX tonight. I, I, I didn't mean, and you know, there, there was talk of, hey, let's put Loki in it, or, or let's put, you know, so-and-so in it, and the idea was, well, you know, we don't want to water them down, so they put four generic men in that we've never seen before. <laughs> DNA. Thumbs down. Yeah. The, the, the wrestling is, was okay, but there was so much stupidity going around, you couldn't even I gave the match a star and a half. There you go. That's the kind of guy I am. Austin, Air, Austin Starr was doing a promo, and Bob Backlund distracted him and said young man a lot. Oh, boy. Austin Starr faced Sen Chi, who was a warrior. Everybody listen to Wrestling Observer Live tonight for the best of Sen Chi. <laughs> was he on a roll? Oh, he was on quite a roll tonight. So he was also the babyface in peril during this match, and what a strange babyface <laughs> Sen Chi is. He was... He was fine, and, and, you know, Star put the cross-faced chicken wing on, I guess, to send a message to Bob Backlund. Why? I don't know. So what this was was taking Senshi and Austin Aries out of Ring of Honor and having him work a heat match. It's exactly what this was. Yep. Two stars. They did a little wacky match. They did a double pin finish, and Senshi got his shoulder up at the last minute. I guess they wanted to have finishes, but they still didn't want to hurt anybody. <laughs> so that meant a bunch of double pins and you shit can't like have that. have anyone lose. 
Sure. So that was that. And then Star was irate afterwards and threw some chairs into the ring, and he was going nuts. And out came Backlund, and they had words. Star slapped him. Backlund put him in the cross-faced chicken wing and dragged him out of the building like a geek. And yeah, he, indeed, like a geek, dragged by a geek. And neither of these geeks can actually do the cross-faced chicken wing right. Well, it has the word chicken wing in there, which indicates the arm is supposed to be behind the man's back. It was. He just don't. He doesn't lock the hands. I see. That's how Bob Backlund's always done the cross-faced chicken wing. I've forgotten. It's fake. Danielson does it real. The guy... <laughs> okay, he does, <laughs> but it is a fake business here. Yes. So, then we had... What did we have? Oh, God, they cut backstage, and Christian, Steiner, and Tomko were, were together. Oh... Steiner just joined this group. This was his second time on camera. And he's already fighting with Tomko. Yes. N- none of these guys like each other, apparently. We often talk about TNA being two hours of programming crammed into three minutes. This was an entire episode of Days of Our Lives crammed into three minutes, which is actually significantly worse. And luckily it ended. They recap the Christy Hemi storyline, which is the worst storyline I've ever seen. Without question. Actually, I don't. Even, I can't quite say that because the storyline with Eric Young, <laughs> the strong contender, is actually as a storyline, Eric Young is worse. Mm, yes, I, that at least could potentially lead to an Eric Young versus Robert Roode match. What the hell is Kip James versus Christy Hemi going to lead to? But at least there's logic in. in in each person's argument, B.G. James doesn't like women, and Christy Hemi wants to wrestle. I see. So you... I'll get into the whole idiocy of the Tracy thing in a moment here. But... All right. So Christy faced her mystery opponent, which was the big, fat, oily guy. Now, I could have sworn that I watched three months' worth of bullshit with VKM, the point of which was they were sick of of stupidity and dumb angles and fat, oily guys in WWE. That sounds familiar. And so they were on a mission to put an end to it. So maybe it's just me, but I've been watching Raw for the past five weeks now, and I haven't seen one fat, oily guy. And aside from Trump and Rosie, I don't think I've seen any bad skits. Whereas the fat, oily guy is now a regular on TNA pay-per-views, not as a spoof, as an actual worker. I guess when you think about it, VKM did win the war. They, won. they got the crappy TV off of Raw. They did, and, and now they have taken it to TNA. And Way to go, guys. Apparently this is some sort of victory. <laughs> they had the most horrible match I think I saw all time all my life. And the fat, oily guy won, which means the loser was us. The fat, oily guy lost. No. The person to get naked lost. Whatever. He, he, he was, was naked. naked That's point. all that matters. We lost. So uh, and then afterwards, out came Kip James... He demanded stripper music so he could show the people what they came to see. He was about to take his pants off, and then he turned and tore her shirt off, which I guess would be sexual assault, but in TNA there are no laws. Exactly. So she ran off, and this was was the second worst segment of the millennium, and the first also involved Christy Hemme. She's on quite a roll here. I... Yeah, well, I don't know how much it's her fault. This the whole idea is stupid. This was two thumbs so far down. I just loved as she stomped up the ramp in her underwear and walked to the back. Dom West asked, is it worth it? <laughs> and I said, you know, I can't imagine it is. That was Shelly, who has a new haircut, a rather generic haircut. Cut a pro- actually, was doing a movie screening, and in the room was, was Sanjay Dutt and Jay Lethal and Kevin Nash and The Girl. The, the interviewer girl. blonde. And I guess they're all trying to bang her is the storyline, and may as well do that because she shouldn't be speaking much. Wow. So he had... What do you mean, wow? That's a strong statement. Well, not, not Why like, is that a strong statement? No, she shouldn't be speaking much, but uh suggests there's nothing left for her to get banged. <laughs> no, I said they're better off doing that than listening to her talk. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to make use of this woman. <laughs> Let's move on here. Yes. So anyway, the footage aired of Tracy calling Eric and setting up some humping later. So this whole it was. <laughs> that's, that's, I love the word humping. It's funny, but that's what it was. She was calling from a hotel room, and, and Alex Shelley was there with the camera, and she was calling Eric to make sure he was on his way. And the highlight of this was Shelley was behind the camera, and, and really the only good thing about the entire storyline. But Shelley was behind the camera, and, and, and Tracy shot him a look at one point, and, Tra- and Shelley just said, bored and annoyed, 
if you slap me, I swear to God, I'll choke slam you. <laughs> that was great, and there's nothing else great about this. No. This, this uh, well, show long wackiness, it was to be continued. Lance Hoyt versus Dale Torborg with David Eckstein and A.J. Pierzynski. Whoever the guy was on Impact, never saw him again. No, Johnny Damon disappeared. Just appeared, and we never saw him again. And I'm sure David Eckstein is a wonderful human being. I've only heard nice things about this man in my limited, my limited investigations of young David Eckstein. Not in that sort of way, but uh, speaking of humping. But the point is, this guy was a black hole of charisma. <laughs> he was, in fact, the most boring man I may have ever seen. He got in the ring with, with, with Lance Hoyt, and they struck a pose that was kind of sort of reminiscent, reminiscent of Diesel and Shawn Michaels, and you've never seen a more boring man. He was like a mannequin come to life, <laughs> and not even like a, a modeling mannequin, just a, mo- a mannequin of an average-looking man. <laughs> he is. He's a, for, for a pro athlete, he's a, he's a small guy. There's, there's absolutely nothing outstanding about him, and he just stands there. He He has got, I mean, he's got so, I'm trying to think of who we usually think has no charisma. Besides you, obviously, but I don't know. He trumps everybody. For a guy whose gimmick once was uh, the fans were saying boring at him, there is Lance Storm. Oh, my God. Lance Storm. Lance Storm's soul is better than this guy. Uh, by the way, I just got an email, and the subject is, you are a winner. So clearly this is not about TNA and is actually spam. So anyway, they had this match, and it was so hideous. I, I, <laughs> uh Really, there's bad. a reason Dale Torborg is no longer a wrestler and is now a baseball coach. And the finish was was <laughs> classic. The bad guys cheated to win. So then Eckstein hit the ring and told the ref what happened, and the ref believed him and restarted it. And then Rick Eckstein, who is his brother, both Ecksteins double teamed the heels, leading to them getting the victory. Yes. This was a night of righteous Christians, that's what this was. <laughs> Between these guys and Sting, it's like the Crusades all over again. They are. They, they are Old Testament violent, take-no-prisoners Christians. Yes. And uh, Lance Hoyt also still has not figured out that he's 6'7", or whatever. Still tries to wrestle like Rey Mysterio. He tried to run up the ropes and fell on his ass. Oh, God, he failed. Yeah. But Between those two and Eckstein, I think A.J. Brzezinski may have been the best worker in this match. Oh, for sure. <laughs> he never got involved. Then we had more with Tracy and Eric. He was acting like an 11-year-old. He brought her half-eaten chocolates, fake flowers. She ripped his clothes off. He said, or she said, this is my first time, too. So Eric Young is, in fact, a virgin in storyline. She said the uh, he didn't want to sign the contract. She said, let me put this on my boobs, something solid. You can uh, sign it to be continued. Mm-hmm. There's more. AJ Styles and Rhino had a chain match. This, Here we go. This is the best of TNA. <laughs> if that's one word for it. Okay, what they did was they, they had two men who were capable of having a good match, and they chained them together. And then, because Vince Russo is writing, they set up two poles. <laughs> it's, it's, it, it started as a joke, and now he just he's going with it. Yeah. He must have a match that involves poles on every show. On every show, there has to be a pole. <laughs> Ideally, more than one pole. Yeah, there were two poles here. One had a key, and the other had a nightstick. Yeah, okay, let's think about this. The key is to unlock the chain. Well, let me explain this. Hold on. I'm not done yet. Oh, there's more. All right. So there's a key and a nightstick, and the idea was that A.J. Styles, who is a, a phenomenal high flyer, he was being grounded by this chain. So he had to fight his way up this pole to get the key to unlock himself. So basically the idea was they had to fight to be able to have a good match. That's Yes, that's part of it. That, that's what's on one pole. Now on the other pole was a nightstick. Sure. Two things. One, why would you hit a man with a nightstick when you've already got a chain right there? Just hit him with a goddamn chain. Two, they said the nightstick was on the pole because it represented the way they kept the law and kept justice in the streets of Detroit. <laughs> I've never been to Detroit, but I suspect the police there have firearms. Well, you can't you can't hang a gun from a pole. Come or even a now. taser. Well, taser maybe, but... So this was stupid. I, I loved how AJ Styles climbs up to the top rope, and he's reaching for the key... And long story short, he gets the key, and then he does a big splash. Like, because he'd been unlocked, he can now do a big splash. Yes. Even though he'd made it to the top rope. He had enough chain to get up there. 
even better was that it took him like four tries to get up there. Like he's this phenomenal athlete, and then he goes to climb the ropes, and it's a struggle. Well, it's just like that last pole match where they had Tomko in there, who could have reached the nightstick without climbing the ropes, but still, still had to climb. they still made him climb to the top rope before he could try to grab it. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> so anyway, it was hideous. Ended up with, uh, actually the match was, I gave the match three and a quarter stars. The the whole story around the match, and, and, and the, this was a match that should have been four stars. And, and, and they found a way down. to get it three and, three and a quarter. The other great part was, after all this stupidity, you, know, you got two men in the ring chained together. The very first thing they do, AJ runs away and Rhino chases after him. Yes. You're on a damn chain, Rhino. Stop running. <laughs> Still stop too. No, he had to chase him. So anyway, ended up with AJ getting the pin after Rhino missed a gore and went through a table. So the defeated streak continues for young Rhino. It is now approximately 37 pay-per-views in a row that he has lost. So Matt Hardy of TNA. He's on a streak here, so what can you do? Oh, Eric signed, and Tracy told him to cover his eyes and count to 10 or whatever, and she'd be right back. So she left and gave the contract to Robert Roode. He walked off. And somewhere in here, Bob Backlund, oh, he ran in when uh, Shelley was showing the film of this, and he was screaming about pornography. It was that. Chris Saban faced Jerry Lynn for the X title. Three stars, an actual good wrestling match with a finish. <laughs> a clean finish. No, it wasn't. He used the ropes. I forgot. There, well, my, my standards have also dropped what clean is. <laughs> if the ref is not bumped and 800 men don't run in. <laughs> that's clean. That's clean. If, if you... Use the ring in an illegal manner, but it's still just you and the other guy. That counts as clean now. Okay. In 2007, that's what it's come to. Fine. This was a clean win by uh, by Jerry uh, Chris Saban. He beat young Jerry or old Jerry Lynn. Not much heat early, and um, yeah, Lynn made a big comeback, ran wild near falls, and then Saban cradled him and grabbed the ropes, got the pin. Three stars, like I said. I think fans were chanting, you're old or something during this match. I, I know there were some weird... Ch- I got a bunch of texts from the building, and one of them was that before the show, there were people outside chanting, Fuck Russo, nice. which sadly I don't think made it on the air. But uh, Robert Roode came out and cut a promo. We haven't seen enough of the show. Now, here's so. here we go. This is the dumbest storyline in all of wrestling. Robert Roode comes out and said he's a happy man because he signed Eric Young. <laughs> and I just thought, all right, of all the athletes in TNA, <laughs> why the fuck do you want... Eric Young. Now, if you'll recall, the storyline was that Tracy could fire Eric Young from TNA at will. So, Robert Roode said, you've got to get Eric to sign with Robert Roode Enterprises or you're fired. So, knowing that she could fire Eric Young at will, and even if she couldn't fire Eric Young at will, he believed she could fire him at will. Yeah. She didn't just say, sign with Robert Roode Enterprises or you're fired. She had to attempt to seduce him to get him to sign. That's number one in the uh, utter stupidity and lack of logic of the storyline. Number two is the fact that he would even want young, Eric, uh, Eric Young. So then he came out, and Eric Young came out, that is, and you would think now would be the time to be pissed or to prepare to fight. He said the fireworks went off and he was scared. Still a geek. So, Robert Roode said, I was trying to figure out why everybody loves you, and I finally figured it out. When the people see you, Eric, they see themselves. The people, Eric, are useless, just like you. Which, again, begs the question, why Why would you not sign him? (laughs) Why do you want Eric Young, then, if he's useless? (laughs) If the people are useless... Why do you want them to like you? That's another good question. Uh, question These question are now four? four questions. So Eric was mad, and he took off his jacket, and he grabbed the mic, but Rude took it back and said that he had signed a legally binding contract. There was nothing he could do about it. And if he broke the legally binding contract with Robert Root Enterprises, he would be fired from TNA. Five! <laughs> I don't know. I say it again. I read a lot of books. I have never seen a worse storyteller than Vince Russo. None of this makes any sense. I can only imagine if Vince Russo actually wrote a script. The continuity editors would take one look at that script, and and the whole thing would just be burnt. This is... I mean, was it TNA, or who did we used to make fun had the incontinuity editor? 
It, I, Apparently, the editor is now the head writer. <laughs> yes, he's in charge. God, I hate this fucking storyline. And then, finally, they all just left. They all just walked that away. That was the culmination. Yeah. Eric Young is now about Bobby Roode's lackey. Yeah. Borash interviewed Christian. Tomka was there and walked off, at which point Christian buried Angle and spouted out the best line I ever heard in my life when he said, and I quote, it's not 1994 anymore. This is 2007. Number one, it was 2000. It was 1996. That's what I thought. Not 1994, unless this was a speed skating gold medal, which last I checked it was not. And number two, if anybody needs to be told it's 2007 and not 1994, it's fucking Vince Russo. Petey Williams and Gail Kim versus James Storm and Jacqueline. Mike Tanay said Petey Williams, over the last couple of months, had become a man <laughs> right before our very eyes. Yes. Apparently, we witnessed him go through puberty. Yeah. They got the heat on Petey. Jackie and Storm were beating on him. Apparently, you could just hit anybody in this match. It wasn't girls with girls, guys with guys. So, a bunch of stuff happened. Distractions. Ended up with Jackie kicking Gail off, who bonked into Storm and then got pinned. Storm tried to break the beer bottle over Petey's head. Petey cut him off, gave him a neck breaker. Tanae was telling Petey to get the bottle, like a grandfather to Little League game, telling the young child to hit the tee ball. And then uh, Jackie broke it up. They were about to uh, give him the death sentence when Chris Harris, in an eye patch, ran out and made the save. Match was about two and a quarter stars, and I gave the whole thing a thumbs up because, seriously, this all made sense. Yeah. <laughs> this was a storyline where everything makes sense. No, I, I like the match actually more than that, and, and everything made sense. The only minor complaint that it was that between the match ending and Harris running out, there was too much stuff going on. I mean, they always it, do that. didn't need the mini comeback, but... But yes, everything made sense, everything was consistent, the match was fine. This was, in fact, a solid thumbs-up segment. Mm -hmm. Sting and Abyss in a prison yard match. They started backstage and had to fight to the ring. <laughs> Always wacky. Table set up backstage, which Abyss, at one point, just walked over and laid well, on. Well, here was, okay, they started fighting in the back. Abyss picked up Sting and pressed him over his head and threw him into, into a dumpster. And it was all scary looking. Then they lifted the camera up to show that Sting dropped about a foot and a half into whatever platform was in this dumpster. So Sting then, or excuse me, Abyss, with Sting in the dumpster, they're fighting on the street. Abyss has to go around a fence to get a table, bring it back to the other side of the fence, and just set it up. Then he goes to get Sting out of the dumpster. Sting whacks him with some uh, drywall or something, and Abyss holds his head, stumbles over the table, and just lays down. Yep. He thought it was a good time for a nap. Yeah. And Sting gave him a big splash off the dumpster. They brawled back to the ring, and... Let's see, there was barbed wire around the ring posts. There was a barbed wire bat under the ring. Reverend Sting was beating the shit out of the monster with the barbed wire bat and beating up the, um, the old, fat old man, the fat old Jim Mitchell. And I kept thinking during this match, how is this benefiting Abyss? <laughs> Does he really have Abyss's best interest at heart as he <laughs> swings this barbed wire baseball bat at him? I mean... This was when I noticed this was the Old Testament <laughs> Yahweh here, who was <laughs> very angry and and filled with wrath, wrath and uh, wrath and, and thunder. Yes, killing men with death. That's what this was <laughs> all about. Men with death. And it was it was a very strange situation to be watching this, but it ended up with Abyss trying to climb the cage, and then Sting hit him again with the barbed wire bat. Gave a power bomb through a barbed wire table and got the pin. The setup for this was all so elaborate. You made the best comment. Is this like a bad video game? <laughs> it was. <laughs> the answer is yes. You have to get off the table, put the barbed wire on the table, then get the bat, then hit the monster with the bat and make it fall onto the barbed wire table. He was climbing this cage like it was King Kong. Yeah. Like, like this. Yes. Like this was the. And, and really, the cage was like six feet tall or something like that. <laughs> it was. I it was, gave, believe it or not, I gave this three stars. I mean, there was enough stuff. It was it was a it was a good match. The crowd was totally into it, and the the, 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 the way you won was by throwing the guy into the cage and slamming the door. And they did enough stuff where you slam the guy in the door and they'd fight over closing, and the fans did into it that you can't see it was really bad. It was just totally silly. It, it was it was very wacky, but I mean, all things considered, it, it was a good match for what it was. Yeah. So I got to give them that. So Singh went after Mitchell afterwards. Put him in the. He was actually throttling him, and then security ran down to break it up, and that was that. So I guess this feud is going to continue then. 
Yeah, Chris Park and Sting. <laughs> Steve Borden. Steve Borden. Steve Borden versus Chris Park. Here's Winner a goes to heaven. Feud for the ages. Winner goes to heaven. No. <laughs> or whatever. I'd just like to see that. I expect when Sting gets up there, there's going to be some stuff to discuss. <laughs> Especially after this feud. Christian and Angle for the NWA title. They said Angle weighed in at 230. I know that for some reason, because that's like the lowest weight I think I've ever heard him build at. Joe was not out there, even though he was the... Actually, what he was was he was the unofficial ringside enforcer, so there was a reason he wasn't out there yet. Well, so. still, he was so unofficial as part of the advertising. Well, I think <laughs> the best part was... This is what I hate about TNA, one of many things, but they ejected Tom Coe. Yet Joe, who was an unofficial, unofficial, uh, whatever, enforcer, was allowed to just come out and watch. So then later in the match, Tom Coe just came back. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't get in trouble. Nope, they didn't restrain him. It was like, okay, go to the back. Please don't come out. But if you do, damn it. Maybe he's just on timeout. Maybe, maybe, maybe he went to the back and behaved himself. They let him come down to the it ring. It may have been like the board. He was put in timeout and then and returned very shortly thereafter. Which Maybe Reed is Tomko. Maybe. You never know. Reed? Reed's never been put in timeout. I picked a name at random. Odele Brown. Odele Brown is Tomko. Except he was put in timeout forever. <laughs> well, never to return. He's the only man permanently banned from the website. Who was, who was put in timeout and let back? Everybody. Everybody's been let back. The Rochester has not returned, and Penis Suplex has not returned, but they're allowed. I, I don't, I'm fine okay. with them coming back. I, I've lost track of all who's been put on timeout, though. Many people have been put in. I think we put about seven people in timeout, and they're all back, except Wasn't for Penis. And, Dallas Cowboys were one of his names? No, I don't think that was actually a timeout. I think he, he requested or something. I don't remember that. The, but the, situa- the, the basic deal is Ole Brown, only one, banned for life. That was just... That was too much. <laughs> that was just a useless poster in every sense of the word. And more than useless, a useless poster that PM'd and emailed me constantly throughout the day, which fucked everything up. I'm trying to do work, and I'm getting 18 PMs from Odalay Brown. Out of here. That'll do it. Thought I'd rant about that again. So anyway, they had this match, and it was a WWE semi-main event pay-per-view caliber match. I really don't know what else to say. It was... You know, they did all their stuff. Angle hit the seven rolling Germans. And then the run-ins began because it is TNA. <laughs> the parade of run-ins began. Yeah, you, you can't have a you can't have a TNA match without run-ins and, and ref bumps and everything like that. And, and they gave it, up, it to us all. We had AJ Styles run-in. And Joe took him out. Joe actually came out about two minutes into the match to his music. Yes. The That's unoffic- how unofficial he was. Unofficial. Yeah, he had his music. So, AJ came out, and Joe chased him away. And as they were running, we heard a crack. <laughs> this was a TNA moment. And Don West was like, Christian hit Angle with a chair, and the referee didn't see it. And I thought, I didn't see it. <laughs> I didn't see it either. Because the director did not get it on film. The director sucks. TNA director sucks. So, yeah, they, they did the chair shot Delia Bob, and, and uh, of course, Angle kicked out. And then the ref took a bump, and then Joe went to check on him. And then Christian went after Joe, and then Angle hit the slam, and, and then Tomko hit the ring. And then Angle hit some Germans on him, and then Steiner hit the ring with a pipe. And then Joe wiped both guys out and brawled to the back. And eventually, Christian hit Angle with the pipe, and... Hit him with the unprettier and got the pin. It ended, and I wish I had a drop of this, but unfortunately I don't. Don West screaming, and I quote, This is a bunch of crap. This just sucks. This just sucks. And then it went off the air. And then the show ended with this suckiness, basically. There was, I mean, it's the usual TNA parade of garbage, but I, I, off the top of my head, I know you just listed this as kind of silly, but off the top of my head I remember two ref bumps. Three, the no, four people running in, and some of them running in more than once, and a lead pipe and a chair. Yeah, and it's the kind of thing. Two, two things. We've been watching so much Ring of Honor that when you see a champion booked right, you realize how horrible <laughs> this company is doing it. Yes, it is like night and day. And why no one gives a shit about their right. champion? No one gives shit one about their champion at all. And uh, someone on the board asked the last time there was a TNA championship 
match on pay-per-view that did not have a million run-ins and interference that had just a clean one-on-one match with a finish. In the main event? And, uh, I don't, I don't. I don't remember if that was part of it. I think this may have been. This may have been a semi-main because the match someone came up with was Christian Cage versus Monty Brown, and that totally is something they'll do a second from the that top. That was in November of 2005. I can actually remember that off the top of my head. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. That's more than a year. <laughs> it's like yes. Every month it's the same old circus, and it, it's lame. Let me tell you something that is very telling. Nobody gave a shit about this pay-per-view. <laughs> yes. As, as much as people talk about Brian, it did 1.6 million viewers. This is the most viewers that have ever watched the show. First off, Nielsen is now tracking college students, and both the Raw and TNA ratings were up this week because of that. It still did its usual 1-1 rating. And really, the point is, even if it did do 1.6 million viewers, the show that 1.6 million viewers saw was such that none of them bought the show. It, this may do 20,000 buys. It may not even hit 25,000 for all I know. Because we actually got a call on the show today from a TNA fan who did not buy the show. You know how many people we had here to watch this show? None. Well, you and me. And, and in fact, last night you said, Sean and I were here for the, uh, the EXC show, and you said, are you guys coming over, over for Impact? Sean said no. And I said, no. And you made me come. But no Ed Tang. No Ed Tang. No, no Mike, Mike Rowe. Rowe. No Brent Kremen. No Brent Kremen. No Ed Tony. No, no Craig. Nobody. No nobody Craig. gave a shit about this fucking show. Now, that's telling me something. Well, even better, your exact words were, no one cared about the pay-per-view, which is true, and that, has, and that doesn't change with how many people watch Impact. Yeah. They that's about, the whole key. Think about 8 million viewers. No one's going to care about the pay-per-view. Yeah, uh, great. You got 5 million viewers, and you still only got 20,000 buys. Your show sucks. <laughs> yeah. Quite frankly, I could put a test pattern on the air and, and uh, sell more buys. I don't know for what, but this show, this TNA Impact this show, company. needs to be revamped immediately. And when the show is over, I got no emails. I didn't get one piece of feedback on this show. The thread on the board. That's bad. <laughs> let's take a look at the thread on the board. Let's see how many people uh, were talking about this pay-per-view here. As I load this Delia Bob up, I know there were a bunch of people in the chat, but people in the chat were more talking about the Observer Live show. Let's see. The official TNA Against All Odds pay-per-view thread is at six pages. Wow. And I would also like to mention that while a lot of it was bullshit, the EXC debut last night had 16 pages. And I got plenty of feedback about that show. There was so much. I was stunned how much feedback there was on, on the Observer site right, for the EXE show. Yeah, there's, there was a ton of it. And really, if, if you take out all the bullshit in the EXC thread, we did get a Gina Carano thread. We got a, uh, let's see, uh, no, two Gina Carano, an EXC, another EXC, another EXC, a Frank Shamrock's a douchebag. That counts. <laughs> And uh, an EXC internet fights request, uh, blah, blah, blah. Whereas for TNA, we actually got the four pages of the pay-per-view thread, of the six pages, and then a bunch of threads from the same people that were in that six, uh, six pages going, uh, let's see here. Um, uh, let's see. Jarrett can save TNA. Uh, <laughs> it's 2007. Uh, TNA sucks. Fuck TNA. Uh, TNA pay-per-view potentially worse than WCW. Uh, lots of funny little stuff here on the board. So, bottom line is nobody cared. Nobody cares. Nobody cared because your TV sucks. Think about it. Yeah. Why, I mean, I ask it every week and the question remains, why would anyone want to buy the pay-per-view? <laughs> Samoa Joe wasn't even fucking wrestling on this pay-per-view. Yep. Absurd. Yeah. It's It's like, the one thing that... Everyone seemed to learn in 2006, and it's still true in 2007. And really, it's been true for the last 50 years. It was kind of forgotten for a while. But the question everyone wants to have answered on a pay-per-view is, who will win? And it works for UFC, and it's worked for Pride, kind of. And WWE has figured that out, and ROH is known for a while. TNA is still clueless. Oh, they're um, utterly clueless. <laughs> they, they don't understand. Utterly clueless. They have no idea in 2007 what people want to see. Yeah. No idea whatsoever. It's pretty obvious by the usual 20,000 buys, but um, that was a show tonight, and I will at least give you this. It was a thumbs in the middle pointing down. 
Okay. But when I look back here, we've got the LAX match. Let's see, what do we got here that was of any value whatsoever? For the first half of the show was th- two thumbs down. <laughs> AJ and Rhino, three and a quarter. That was good. Saban and Lynn, three stars. That was good. PD Gale, James, and Jacqueline. I gave it two and a quarter. Apparently you thought it was better. Seeing an abyss, three stars, good. And main event, probably three stars, good. That's a thumbs in the middle show. Okay. Booking, two thumbs down. Booking needs to change immediately. This was a show that, this this was what this was. TNA, the fact that the TV is so unwatchable is, I shouldn't say something to be proud of, but it is an accomplishment. To be able to make such shit out of having so much. Yes. A TNA has so much talent that if you give all these guys time to actually have a match and there are no blow-up dolls, you're probably going to get some good matches. It wasn't that long ago. But nobody watching TV would ever know any of this because yeah. we have not had a long match since, like, November or October or whenever Russo showed up. I don't think we've had a match longer than four minutes since, like, October. Why would anybody and, buy a pay-per-view? And no show with a total of more than 10 minutes. Why would anyone buy a pay-per-view? To see more shitty acting, more bad writing, more bad comedy. Thursday, a gauntlet for the gold on TNA. I don't know how they're going to get that in two minutes, but they'll try, I'm sure. Last thing that I watched before doing this show was TNA. And boy, is that put me in a foul mood. <laughs> that was a mistake. I feel like killing someone. <laughs> And you're the only one here. As usual. Someday I may kill you. Yeah. And, and, and if you die, I'm afraid they're going to come to me first after all these shows. But, god damn, I hate TNA. It sucks. I will say this. This is better. The, the, the second half of the show where they did the gauntlet for the gold, which actually was just the gauntlet for the title shot, a little Royal Rumble type deal where the winner gets a shot at Christian at the pay-per-view. That was fine. Sure. It was fine. But the first half of the show just filled me with such anger. <laughs> and really, you know what? This week, the bloom is off the rose, or whatever they want to say. This week, I, I didn't even really... It wasn't like I laughed at the stupidity. It wasn't good. And it was so bad that I just... I didn't even really get mad. You're just numb to it all. Not even that. It was not only numb. It was more angry, angry at time wasted in my life. Uh, it, yeah. This really started to bother me tonight. When I think about all the stuff that we've got to watch, and the time wasted on this utterly useless show, that pissed me off. This show really made me mad tonight. The first half hour of this show was such utter bullshit. And you often hear... Older wrestlers and veteran wrestlers making the comment that the art of wrestling is lost. And it's not, because there are still guys around. I mean, when a bunch of folks die, yeah, this business is done for. <laughs> but right now, there there's still some people left that understand the art of this business. But largely, that is true. The art of this business is gone. Talk about a show written by a bunch of people that don't have a clue what this is all about. I'm going to go over the first part of this show here, talk about it a little bit and get angry, and then we'll move on to Raw, which was actually a fantastic show, but I'm so angry at TNA, it's going to take me a while to get going here. And WSX, which is even better than Raw. Uh, I don't know about that. It was it was very wacky. It was awesome. TNA starts with Scott Steiner coming out, and he's mad. And he said Christian called last month and wanted to know if Scott knew how to beat Kurt Angle, and Christian won. Claimed in August he was renegotiating his contract, and it got put on hold because TNA was trying to bring in Kurt. And he said this left him high and dry and not a penny left. That was his exact word, yes. Save your fucking money, kids. He said he wanted to know who Angle ever beat. He said he'd beaten everybody Kurt had beaten. He said, and I quote, John Cena, I beat him. Batista, I beat him. And I don't care how many times Triple H had to sleep with the boss's daughter, I beat him. 
Somebody please tell me if Scott Steiner ever beat Triple H. I don't remember this one. Or either any of those guys. I'm sure he beat Cena and, and uh, Batista back then in some sort of wacky match, but I, I did not. I do not recall him beating Hunter. That was like the whole deal. Hunter exposed him in those matches. So maybe he won one via count out or something I think like that. Perhaps he won via DQ. DQ or something stupid. But anyway, that's hardly the the issue here with this promo. Angle came out after Steiner ran down his wife and. Talked about this and that, and Angle said he didn't come here for money. He came to help build TNA up to go head-to-head with Vince in a few years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> write that down, kids. That day never coming. <laughs> that day is never coming. So they got in this big argument, and and then they got in a fight. And they got in this fight, and Angle gave him a German suplex, and he put him in the ankle lock, and Steiner just tapped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like a punk. The feud hasn't even really started yet. They yelled at each other back and forth. And in the first interview segment, Steiner tapped. Who gives a fuck about this match now? Well, that would be no one. Who could possibly care? The heel already tapped out. So, then... After he taps out, Tom Cole ran in, and then all of the babyface locker room came out, including Shark Boy, and today is like, they're all here to support Kurt Angle. Since when was Kurt Angle <laughs> the man the whole locker room wanted to support? Kurt Angle said it best himself. I don't know if I'm a babyface or a heel, but I love it. Thank God someone does. Uh, he's the one, yes. So then Angle grabs the mic, and he says... Joe, I know I promised you a title shot, and tonight you can win that shot in the gauntlet match, but you're going to have to go through me first. And he extended his hand, and they shook. I have no idea why he even called out Joe out here and mentioned all this, but all I could think was when he said, me the best man win, hit out of his hand, all I could think was, Joe, he broke your girl's ankle. Joe don't care. <laughs> Apparently not. Why would we care about any of these characters that are so dumb, <laughs> that are so transparent. We're not supposed to remember that Kurt Angle broke Joe's girlfriend's ankle like a month and a half ago. It's all water under the bridge. These things just happen. Number two, Angle's like, the gauntlet match. What fucking gauntlet match? <laughs> they introduced the gauntlet match after this promo had been done. Angle did a promo about the gauntlet match. Now, granted, this had been announced on TNAWrestling.com on Sunday night. Woo! Well, then you should have known. Fuck, I guess we all should have known. Angles, you're talking about this match that after this opening segment, then they explain the match. Right. You couldn't fucking do that before Angles starts talking about the gauntlet match? And thirdly, who the fuck cares about mutual respect? I don't watch this to see mutual respect. You think people watch Tito Ortiz and Chuck Liddell because they respected each other? No, they want to see two guys kick each other's ass. Why do you think people are going to buy WrestleMania? A bunch of fucking mutual respect? No, they, they, they may be two baby faces now. But believe me, by the time that that match comes along, Sean and Cena are going to hate each other. And Undertaker and Dave are going to hate each other. Mm -hmm. This ain't going to be some bullshit about mutual respect. They, they, they will not trade holds and shake hands over and over again. So then they plug the gauntlet match, like I said. And then Borash interviews LAX. And and they're talking about the... Um, actually, this is later on. There were a couple of LAX deals, but... Christian came out, or he was backstage. He was yelling at Steiner and Tomko. Still can't get along. Steiner has been there for two days. Four segments. And they're already doing this big brawl between... Or this big breakup angle between Steiner and Tomko. So anyway, Christian said, here's the plan. You guys eliminate everybody and then forfeit the match so I don't have a, ch a challenger to the next pay-per-view. Like Jim Cornette wouldn't just give him another challenger. Like They, they couldn't find anyone. Sure. He Christian gets a day off of the pay-per-view. Yeah, you just get a day off, yeah. So, Snyder doesn't like this plan and he run, runs off and Christian's like, Tomko, I mean, let me tell you this, you're like a son to me. And Tomko says, well, I've got a match, Dad. Again, who cares? 
Who could I, possibly care about this storyline? I have no answer for that. And why? Because it's another Vince Russo storyline that didn't have a beginning. It That's just started true. right in the middle. They just started not getting along one day for absolutely no reason. No, Steiner showed up and they just weren't getting along. <laughs> you you can't. You, it, oh God, I fucking hate this show. Here, I'll I'll get to this next part in a minute here, but there there's. I'll just move on. LAX and Shark Boy, uh, face Shark Boy and Norman Smiley. Match went a minute, and they had to leave time, obviously, for talking. This being impact and all, total nonstop action, total nonstop talking. Bubba's like, we weren't happy with these Latino dudes at the pay per view. So here's our big cousin Steve, and like the most generic man I ever saw appeared. A guy came out. And he's cut this, and it was actually a, a fine promo, all things considered. But I, I sat there looking at him like, you can't be a wrestler. <laughs> and if you're not a wrestler, why are you here running down LAX? Are you going to be fighting them? So, even though Bubba explained it, it was their cousin Steve, we later learned this man was an actor on The Sopranos. Thanks to Conan. Conan pointed this out. Sure. You can bring the whole cast of The Sopranos, he said. So, they set up this match for next week, a... A, uh, what did they call it? A belting pot match. A belting pot match. Which is basically a lumberjack match with, with straps. With straps. And I guess the actor is going to be there in the match. He, used to, I, I don't he implied know. he would be there whipping LAX up. Yeah, you, you're going to be in there beating up Hernandez <laughs> there, uh, Bobby, uh, guy. Steve, or whatever your fucking name Cousin is. Cousin Steve. Soprano Steve. Eric Young was backstage with Tracy talking about how he thought she loved him, and literally never a more impotent baby face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Somebody mentioned this to me that how how is it that you've got a show that devotes as much time to Eric fucking Young as Sting and Kurt Angle and Samoa Joe? How many buys is Eric Young selling? Well, that would be zero. None. Not a single solitary buy. And he's getting as much time as a guy like Kurt Angle, who theoretically should be selling buys. But coincidentally, isn't. Funny how that works. So he's ranting, and, and he's sad and everything like that. And and after they're done, Borash is like, why are you doing this to this guy? And Robert Roode says, I could buy you ten times over. Mind your own business. And again... Robert Roode is just suddenly a millionaire. He's just suddenly Mr. Wall Street. Okay. And I'm going to talk about one of these in a moment. You've got all of these utterly, utterly pointless skits on this show. You couldn't devote 30 seconds to Robert Roode with a scratch ticket to explain his million dollars. You could have gone to the casino like Vinny V. Yes, he couldn't just... Wa yeah, we explain your millions. <laughs> We did a fucking video to explain why you went from Shoulders Trelly to Vinny V, which nobody in the world cares about. But we at least had <laughs> to make even sure. Us. <laughs> we at least had to make sure in our own brain that it made sense. Yes. Why were you showing up at the next ICW show as Vinny V? We shot our own video. And nobody in ICW saw it. None of the fans saw it. <laughs> fans saw it, it doesn't matter. We justified it to ourselves. Yes. Now, if Tim would have let us show, that had been one thing, but he wasn't going to let us. But the point was, there, there, this storyline made sense to us. This Robert Roode storyline, no sense. They, they, he, he went on his own. They couldn't even do it on Explosion. And then, and then tell us about it? That would have been better. That would have been better. made one comment on TNAWrestling.com. Roode In, wins lottery. Instead, he's just Robert Roode. Robert Roode has good day playing bingo. Mr. Wall Street. Yes. Roode's grandma dies. He inherits millions. So they couldn't spend 30 seconds to explain to us why Robert Roode was a millionaire now. But we got 30 seconds of Ron Killings doing a Rocky spoof, which was the dumbest thing I ever saw in my whole life. And again, what does this have to do with anything? Apparently, well, <laughs> it has nothing to do with anything. Vince Russo thinks that Ron Killings needs a gimmick to get over. Yeah. His gimmick needs to be that he... Tries it's to horrible. make movies and sucks at it. As as Lance Storm said, I never noticed it until he pointed this out. Every Russo character is is a dumb person. Yes. Why? Or a failure. An idiot. Ron Killings is failing. He's trying to make movies and he sucks at it. 
Gail Kim faced Jackie in an arm wrestling match. Now, I know that at the pay-per-view I said, I, I like this because it all makes sense. Why were they having an arm wrestling match? To, to get them in the ring. <laughs> was there a test of strength on the pay-per-view that <laughs> no, I missed? There was no bill for this arm wrestling contest. They just decided, hey, let's have these two girls arm wrestle. Yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> and then Gail won. Gail <laughs> Yep, a swerve. That had to be a swerve. So, then, of course, Chris Harris ran in after Petey Williams. Petey Williams is still involved for some reason. Just because they got to get a guy on TV. Now now it's three on two for the baby faces. Yeah, yeah, it, it was. Chris Harris ran in to uneven the odds. Yes. It was two on two, and I guess the baby faces just weren't good enough. They were getting squashed. So a third baby face ran in yes. to uh, take up on the heels And this here. is a, a minor note, but Chris Harris came in through the crowd in the street clothes, and apparently he had run several miles beforehand. He had the biggest pit stains in his shirt. <laughs> oh, and the hair's all wet, too. And the hair's all wet. Sure, yeah. Saban was doing the old man gimmick. With the walker in the bathrobe. Apparently there's some sort of match next week where the winner gets a shot at the title. Bob Backlund had to come up and explain that a ladder would be involved. And he's going to have someone there to beat up Saban. Whoa. Yep. More stuff with Nash and the X Division geeks. They have now introduced Soul Cal Val. And I say introduced meaning she is now on television. They have not actually told us who the fuck this girl is. No, they've only ever shot the camera through her legs as the guys came down the ramp and occasionally saw her smiling at ringside. Now she's, uh, they were doing an American Idol spoof and she was the Paula Abdul character. Sure, just talking, she's got lines, but they never bother telling us who the fuck this girl was. No. So, yeah, and, and I don't know what the fucking point of this whole thing was, but... It was, it was horrible. <sighs> so that was the worst... 35 minutes of a show I ever saw. And and this trumps the show from mid-December, whatever it was, or November, that I said was the worst impact I've ever seen. That remains the worst single impact show I've ever seen. This was the worst 35 minutes I ever saw because every single thing was utterly useless. Looking back, and this did not occur to me at the time, but the first 35 minutes of the show contained one actual wrestling match, I think. That went one and minute. It went one minute and it was a squash. All they do is cry. We don't have enough time. <laughs> we need two hours. You have one minute of wrestling. Look what you did with that 35 minutes. Bullshit. Useless bullshit. And you cry. We need two hours. Oh, you, you would imagine have, two hours you, of the show. You would have stretched this bullshit out to an hour? Oh, it would have just been double the skits. And, and, and a show would end with six minutes of wrestling. Absolutely no understanding of what the point of this business is. No. None whatsoever. You want to go beyond that? They have no idea of what entertaining television is. What a day. They can't even make it fun to watch and silly. No. It's just dumb. WSX is pointless, but fun. But it's awesome. This is pointless and no fun. Right. I, I don't know, I, I can't remember exactly what Dave said on the show today, but something like, they they figured out that they've got a lot of viewers and no one's buying pay-per-views. Okay. Yeah, no shit? <laughs> <laughs> it took some, oh, you just now figured this out? It took them a year. You just now figured out you may need more wrestling on your fucking show? Hmm. Hmm. Never would have thought of that one. Wild. Do you watch your fucking own shows? I wouldn't. Then we have the gauntlet for the gold, which was fine. And I'll say fine because they did a match that determined a number one contender, and, and Joe actually won the match. I, I was I swear to God, I was totally expecting it would come down to Steiner, Tomko, and Joe, which it did. And then Angle would come in and uh, help eliminate everybody. I was certain Angle was going to come in and throw guys out. Yeah, and, and I there thought... Was no doubt in my mind. Yep, and, and amazingly, Joe actually won the title shot clean. Joe fought back against... that. that there was heel miscommunication, he... Fought back, he eliminated Steiner, and then with two guys, he came into a pinfall finish, and he pinned Tonka with his finisher clean in the middle of the ring to become the number one contender. Now, let me say this. Fine. For all of the crying about how we need two hours and all this bullshit, this show would have been so much better at 30 minutes. Oh, yeah. If they would have eliminated the first half of this show and only aired the second half, this would have been a thumbs-up program. Sure. Instead, they wasted a half hour on bullshit, and this is maybe a thumbs in the middle if I'm being real nice, like I was at the pay-per-view. 
I guess. Yeah. I, I, I mentioned when we watched this last and WSX ended, I was like, I'm so happy I'm ready to watch Impact now. I'm excited for this show. And you said, we'll see how long that lasts. Just start. And by the end of the show, I was just, oh, God. You know, I don't want to say this, but I'm going to say this anyway. TNA needs to survive for the good of this business so that so that there can be a place for guys to work. Because there's only so many spots in WWE. Yes. It's good to have a whole bunch of different places for people to work. I don't want WSX to die. I don't want TNA to die. But in TNA's best interest, about 40 guys need to be fired. Fire them. Well, it's true. They need a roster of 15. That's it. And, and that may be too many. Guys just need to be fired. That's how you're going to make this thing work. Right now, with 50 guys on the roster and trying to get every fucking single one of them on TV in an hour, Mm -hmm. bullshit. And if you're trying to get those same 50 people on in a two-hour show, still going to be bullshit. I'm afraid so. Just watch. We're going to talk about Raw here in a moment, but look at all the guys left out in the dust on Raw. We mentioned Chris Benoit the other night. Yeah. Chris Benoit is just missing on SmackDown. Why? Because there is no spot for Chris Benoit because guys are going show to show to show to show to show. But because there's no spot for him, they don't try and make a spot. They just realize right now there's no spot for Chris Benoit. Down the road, there'll be a spot for him, and they'll do something with him. Mm -hmm. But right now, they're building up for WrestleMania. They've got two top matches with four guys. They're also building up for a pay-per-view on Sunday, and that's what's important. Right. So some guys, sadly, get left by the wayside. They, they say they may have had hurt Benoit's feelings by saying, Chris, you're not going to be on TV much over the next month or so. I'm sure he's not weeping. No. <laughs> he gets it. He understands how this whole thing works. And TNA does not understand. In any way, everybody's got to get on TV. Everybody's. I was watching, I swear to you, I was watching that Gauntlet match when it first started, and I was like, how are they going to do a match with ten men and not eliminate anybody? I was trying to figure out how they were going to do it. I and thought for sure protect no, everyone. Yeah, I thought for sure nobody's going to be eliminated. There's there's going to have to be some sort of everyone's going to be counted out or DQ'd or eliminate themselves or something like that. So I was flabbergasted when when people were actually being eliminated. I was watching it and, and you know they did one minute intervals with fourteen guys. So uh, it, you know like Tina usually is, it's a blur. There's just guys coming in, running in, and throwing each other out and. Towards the end there, Don West mentioned, Sting's been in since the beginning. Yeah. Twelve minutes. What a fucking... In TNA, that's an Iron Man. Yeah, Iron Man, that Sting. Twelve whole minutes he was Good in that God. goblin match. What a, what a freak of nature he is. Crazy. Let's talk about the TNA rating. You wonder why. Hmm. Why did Raw do a 3 and TNA did a .47? Well, TNA sucks. <laughs> uh, yeah. If ever, I've had people get very upset at me for claiming TNA's nothing but the fourth WWE brand. It's nothing but heat. It's nothing but velocity. It's nothing but the fourth brand underneath Raw, SmackDown, and ECW in that order. People get very mad. Well, when they went head-to-head, turns out people watched Raw. They watched the A brand. Huh. Who knew? Shocking. Yeah. I I was amused. I got a PM here from somebody asking about the possibility that, that TNA had hurt the Raw audience. Because Raw in this time slot was apparently down from Raw last year in this time slot. And they attributed this to TNA. Somehow the TNA rating that was cut in half (laughs) took viewers away from Raw. I don't know how such a thing happens. If that's what you'd like to think, be my guest. If you want to... Or we can look at the reality of the situation. (laughs) Which is that what TNA is presenting is something that the majority of fans view as WWE light. And when you have a chance to watch WWE or WWE light, they choose WWE. I think it's more a choice of choosing between good stuff and shit. I think there's a certain amount of wrestling fans that will watch any wrestling. They're the ones who are watching TNA. And uh, given the option of being TNA and good wrestling, they'll choose good wrestling. This was a sad state of affairs, this this rating. 
I know you cackled. I actually felt somewhat bad for TNA. I don't know why. And, and I hated... I, I hated. That. I feel bad for the wrestlers of TNA. I, I feel bad for the guys who, who's, whose careers are... I don't know. The careers are, are, are hanging on the success of this company. I feel no no sympathy for TNA themselves. I just there, there's just something about being humbled so bad. <laughs> I just I, there was a pang in my heart. Like God, that sucks. That sucks. But that's you know that's that's the way things work. And and maybe some people in TNA should open their fucking eyes for once. And and exactly, it, 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 it's. Hey, it may be a positive. Anybody blindsided by this? No. Oh. What's wrong with you? No, I'm, I'm just saying. Oh, not me. Because I'm sure that there are people that, that were like, holy crap. God, how did that happen? That doesn't make any sense. I thought we might win. They were really stupid if you thought that. Man, I thought that show last night that we that we put together with, with a minute of wrestling action in the first 35 minutes, I thought that was great. I thought all those wacky skits, you know, I thought that might take away from from Shawn Michaels and Undertaker, and all the and Vince McMahon and Donald Trump and all the stars of Raw. No, nope, didn't do it. I don't know. I don't know. I, I just every now and then I, I hear something like something happen, and, and people in TNA were surprised, and I'm just like, why? <laughs> How could you be surprised? TNA sucks. How, how could any fans suck? No, how, I'm, no, I'm not saying any of that. I'm, I'm just saying like any wrestlers don't suck for the most part. How after after all this time could you like be discovering that what you're doing ain't working? I mean, it hasn't been obvious. What it is it is it's just if you go to that that Vince Russo fans board and and, and if you listen to the people that are defending TNA, I mean, really, as as much as they get mad at people for for. I'll just say myself in particular, yelling at TNA and ripping apart the shows. As much as they, they complain about that, really, the people that are hurting TNA the most are those apologizing for everything and making excuses for everything and not looking at it in a critical manner. I'm trying to explain how, oh, this is great. Uh, the fact that there's still 25,000 buys is great. I'm trying to make excuses like, oh, it's only been five years. Uh, companies are supposed to lose money at the beginning, if, if, shit like that. If, if, Instead of looking looking at the reality of the situation, that's hurting this way more. If changes need to be made, and you turn a blind eye to it to, to, to that fact, and you and you make uh, and, and you throw out a thousand reasons why everything you're doing is okay, give it time, things will work out. And whereas in reality, everything is far from okay. Then yeah, then a night like this maybe it'll help them. <clears throat> I, I, I died there. You did fade out, but yeah. So if you're a big TNA fan, fuck off. <laughs> Jesus Christ! If you're a big TNA fan, it's not going to help your company to go on our board and and spend time defending it, or go on other boards and, and try and justify this rating and and try and try and grasp at straws like God, they might have taken the raw rating down a notch or whatever. Look at look at what's going on. I mean, really look at it. You can defend it all you want, but like I said, that's going to hurt this this whole situation way more than it's going to help. They need right now, more than anything else, some heavy criticism of what the fuck's not working. And God knows, some of us have been given that criticism for a long time now. Five years. Yeah, and um, it's a sad number, though. When I saw the picture of Iron Sheik, I thought, you know... <laughs> I was reading through the thread and and the thread for the rating and there's a just someone had just posted Iron Sheik putting some guy in the camel clutch. That was the whole post. And and for like five seconds I thought I'm gonna take that picture and that's gonna be the front page picture for this story. And then I was like, that's too cruel. <laughs> I can't do it. I I just I I felt I I felt bad it's just to see some just to see a group humbled in such a profound manner. So anyway. That's pretty much it for today, kids. Do you have anything else to say that's not making fun of, of uh, not gonna, hardcore fans I'm not gonna, that love the product? Uh, what, what, what is sad about them seeing what their place in the world truly is? <laughs> how, how is this heartbreaking? Why should I feel it's not, it's not heartbreaking. It's not depressing or anything like that. I, I just I, I felt bad. <laughs> it's just It was such a humbling. Yeah. 
If it would have been if it would have been three four to point eight, I wouldn't have felt bad at all. If, if there had been no change whatsoever or just a small change in the TNA rating, I wouldn't have felt bad at all. But to see it cut in half, and 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 I think part of it is just because their fans are so passionate, and so many people are sad today because TNA got humbled. That's sad. That's just me. If you say so. I don't give a shit what you think. I know. TNA. That's right. Oh, uh, <laughs> I just remember the beginning of the show, which we need a drop of. They're hyping up the show tonight, which is a contract signing with Angle and Steiner, a five-way ladder match where the winner gets a shot at the pay-per-view. The dude from Sopranos is doing something. And then Don West screams, plus Sting speaks from his deathbed. Yes, as an added bonus. We have a dying man's last word. Plus, plus Sting speaks from his deathbed. As if they were cutting the promo for the show and they said, we have five seconds left. What else can we plug? Sting's dying. I, I I wasn't I could not believe that so we actually went back and replayed it and in fact but he did say he is speaking from his deathbed. He said it and like three or four seconds passed and then I said wait what? <laughs> and you looked at me and said what? And I said he just said Sting was going to speak from his deathbed. He said no he didn't. I said I think he did. And we we responded and that's what the man said. <laughs> Please make a drop of this immediately. So then out came AJ and and today is like how could we forget anyone with a cocky attitude like that? And they're such horrible cartoon characters. They're, they're the most stereotypical wrestling announcers, and it doesn't help this program. No. It often hurts. I do, we'll get to it shortly. I do love AJ as a heel. I, I don't know why. He's, he's well, a, he's the past, since his last heel turn. Uh, this heel AJ is totally different than the prior heel AJ we've seen. He's, he's much wackier now. Yeah, and here's the problem. AJ's drawing no money as this wacky heel AJ. But I'm entertained. Mm. And I think that that's something that all TNA fans need to understand. I know you love TNA. <laughs> I know you love it. That's great. I know you just like watching it and watching that hour and being happy. Great. But you know what? If the company goes out of business, you ain't going to have your hour of TNA to watch. It's going to be gone. And all those guys, out of work. Now, why would TNA go out of business? Because they don't make no money. Now, why is AJ Styles not making any money here? Because he's a goofball. But he's funny. You need to separate that. I understand that I like AJ as a, as a wacky heel. I know I'm entertained. But I'm also wise enough here to realize that this ain't good for the company. There's also the point you were, 10 minutes ago, we were talking about Finley and how that didn't matter. AJ is a top of the card person right now. AJ is is uh, is going to be. He's in the wacky gimmick match on the pay per view. He is going to be in the main event Ultimate X match at the pay per view, and he should not be. And this is the whole thing that that killed Kurt Angle is a big draw. Kurt Angle drew money when he was in with uh, big stars, but on his own he wasn't a huge draw. Which the twenty thousand buys for Angle versus Christian, I should tell you something about Kurt Angle's drawing power in TNA. But the point is, he was a wacky baby facer and a wacky heel for so long that nobody wanted to pay to see a wacky goofball. I mean, it's fun to laugh at for free on TV, but people weren't paying to see him in main events. And it's the same thing with, with AJ. If you want to make AJ a force, he needs to be, he needs to be a badass heel, not uh, Captain Wacky here. So anyway, they plugged this big X Division match, which is Elevation X, the big scaffold match. X State Scaffold. And... All I know is Rhino came out, accepted the challenge, and then said he was going to gore AJ off this thing. And you're worried, aren't you? <laughs> well, why would you say that? Because either A, you don't, and everyone's pissed, or B, you do, and he dies. <laughs> well, there's that, too. Well, that's just, why? Why would you say that? Are you going to stack up 24 tables? What are you going to do? No one's being gored off this scaffold. And if AJ Styles takes a gore off this scaffold, that's the last you'll all see AJ Styles. And probably the last you'll all see of TNA. This was dumb. Fine, uh, it, was a, it was a final wacky interview, though. That, that line was dumb, but the, the, they came out, they announced a match at the pay-per-view, and then they teased it, and then AJ ran away, and that was that. Yeah, Rhino was at least serious. That was good. Rhino was serious. More importantly, 
<laughs> we talk about this all the time. What's the point of the segment of TNA? The point of this TNA segment was to let the fans know a match is coming up. There's going to be a match. It's going to be in the pay-per-view. You're going to have to pay to see it. Yes. Thumbs up for that. That was a thumbs up. Bellas did an interview with Steve talking about the belting pot match. What is a belting pot match? Bubba didn't know either. So that should tell you something right there. Ended up being a lumberjack strap match with a wacky name because Vince Russo's in charge. And we had the LAX members, or LAX Latino Nation members, and then Cousin Steve and a bunch of Goombas. That's the word they used. Don't get mad at us. Yeah, they did. They called them Goombas and Paisans. They had a bunch of whipping and shit like that. And, and this match went longer than every match on TNA last week put together. Mm-hmm. Dudley's won 3D after help from Steve. Thumbs up. They did the bit where, you know, obviously guys get tossed out. The Mexicans would get tossed out and the Italians would whip them. And then 3D would get whipped out, uh, tossed out and the Mexicans, Mexicans would whip them. This happened over and over. And finally, a giant gang war broke out. And everyone loved that. Yeah. So that worked. Entertaining TV, an actual wrestling match. Thumbs up again. All totally fine. Then we had a pre-taped deal with Sting on his deathbed. It's actually a platform of some sort, and I believe what's going to happen, and this was has nothing to do with the television. I had to be told this secondhand, but you have to put your opponent on this platform and then raise him to the ceiling. Great. Why that constitutes a victory, I don't know. <laughs> Perhaps they'll then be struck with lightning like Frankenstein. I, I just love that there has to be some sort of wacky gimmick. It's almost, it's, like, on a pole. it's almost like they've got so little faith in all of their wrestlers being being money draws. or uh, They have so little faith in all their programs that they think they've got to make everything a gimmick. Well, that's what that's what how Vince Russo thinks. He thinks no one will pay to see a wrestling match. Well, maybe if you fucking didn't book like a dipshit, maybe people would pay to see your goddamn wrestling matches. Then we had a pre tape We just talked about that. Borash interviewed Abyss. No Jim Mitchell, who is gone for the foreseeable future. So Abyss's interview consisted of him grunting and choke slamming Jeremy into a chain link fence. All right? The end. Robert Roode and Eric Young and James Storm versus VKM and Lance Hoyt. Eric Young does not want to be a heel, so he ended up doing wacky spots with uh, BG James and actually clotheslined his own partner. And again, entertaining program somewhat, but not selling a single buy. And they uh, did some wackiness, and then Hoyt did one move, went to the top, the heels crotched him, and he was pinned. <laughs> Viva Lance Hoyt. You're screwed. So that was that. I don't think Kip James ever got in the ring. And then no, Chris... he, Kip, Kip James never got in the ring. And then the, really the only entertaining part of this was Chris Harris came out, and he chased James Storm around the ring twice and then up the ramp. Yeah, they were playing tag. And then we had a – that was a thumbs in the middle segment right there, whatever. Don West interviewed Andre Ryzen, or Ryzen, whatever, football player. Scheduled to be on Pros versus Joes, wearing an absurd outfit. He was wearing, it was like he, he came just for the show, and they said, here, put this football jersey on. So he just threw it on over his shirt, and then, like, right before he went out, realized, hey, this jersey only was halfway down. Still wore it. He wore the damn jersey. So, he was, uh, he actually, I don't know what the point of it was. That they plugged the show, and then he was threatening to kick the fans' asses. Apparently there was a fan there who thought Andre Ryzen sucked. And he was going to beat this man. <laughs> he was going to beat up this fan, which would have been very entertaining. So then out came Chris Park. That's was, Abyss in a mask. Who was Abyss, wow. yes. So I thought Abyss would be a Joe. Apparently not. He destroyed Andre Ryzen, gave him a black hole slam, and it was a hell of a bump by young Andre. And then it just ended. And then it just ended. I, I, I just want to know what Andre got for this, because he's been on some hard times. He, pro- he probably got some decent money for it. It's TNA, and they probably paid him more than the entire X Division <laughs> for a whole month. Really possible. More shit with Ron Killings. He was Rambo. I don't know what happened in this show. <laughs> that one went off the cliff. Another Randy Savage impersonation by Jay Lethal. This was ten minutes of just wasted time between listen, all these different segments. Listen, everyone, I'm glad you thought Jay Lethal doing Randy Savage was funny last week. It it wasn't funny last week. I didn't think it sure as hell was not funny week two. It's just lame. It's a waste of time yeah. from a company that says we don't have enough time. If you don't have enough fucking time, stop wasting it. <laughs> what? And by the way, this big there's a big rumor, this big report that Vince Russo is frustrated. 
he has to get all these guys on the show, and he watched his own show, and he couldn't remember a thing that happened. You wrote the show, and you can't remember a fucking thing that happened. Right. I can tell you for a fact that Vince Russo showed up with these monumental, gigantic scripts that had to be fit into one hour. This is what Vince Russo's doing. And, and this show set a new standard. Apparently there were 50 individuals in this one hour. <laughs> Five zero. Impressive. That's almost one a minute. 50 people. Now, of course, it does count lumberjacks and shit like that, but still, 50 people on the show. Tanae was training, or I'm sorry, he said Christian was training, and Sting as well, and they would be back next week. Um, I was stunned they held two men off the show. Of course, it turns out they didn't. They lied. Christian was there anyway. Did a contract signing. Angle and Steiner were out there, and 